I'm David Levin, and welcome to another earnest episode of Pop Goes the Culture. Today, in part four of our conversation, Rue McClanahan tells us some of her surprising untold stories. She was supposed to be on Soap, the Norman Lear pilot she worked on with only two episodes ever seen, the never seen show she did with Dabney Coleman, Apple Pie. Plus, why she left Mama's family. Getting her in, I guess we're starting again, getting her in was just, he said, wow, you know, wouldn't it be great if they switched? Because you were the innocent one on Maud, kind of wide-eyed. And so flip that and, and, and immediately change the audience's expectations. God bless him. God bless Jay Sandridge. He's a genius. Oh. You know what I said to him when I spoke to him on the phone the first time? I said, uh, I said, well, I have, to, I have to meet you and do this interview because you were one of the people who warped my mind when I was growing up. <laughs> Why'd you watch Soap? <laughs> I watched Soap. I watched, you know, he worked on everything. Do you know I turned down Soap? But you did. Uh, who were you gonna, who were you uh, gonna play on Soap? Let's put it on tape. We're rolling. We're back. Yes, I was saying God bless Jay Sandwich and that he directed Soap and I turned it down. Uh, because that year was the year that Maud closed and Norman Lear <clears throat> had offered me my own show. He had found a play in New York that he wanted to adapt to television. And uh, it was about a woman in Kansas City in 1931 during the Depression who, uh, we named her Ginger, Je Ginger Nell Hollyhock. Ginger Nell Hollyhock, and she's an orphan, and she has this old house with lots of rooms, so she runs an ad in the paper for a grandfather, and he shows up. She, she interviews various people, and she picks Jack Guilford, who was blind, very funny, and uh, son, she has two sons, in fact, in the, in the uh, pilot, but then it was cut down to one and then uh, daughter, and then she's looking for a husband to put this family together. They're all gonna make a family now. And Fast Eddie comes along. He comes to the audition. That's um, Dabney Coleman. We were gonna use either Dabney Coleman or uh, Bernie Schwartz. What's his real name? I mean, that's his real name. What's his? Bernie Schwartz. Oh. Wait, maybe I've got his name wrong. Uh, Bernie, you know, um, gorgeous, married to Janet Lee. Oh, well, Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis. Of course, yeah. We were going to use either Tony Curtis or Dabney Coleman. Norman and I did the interviewing and uh, got it down to those two, and boy, they were both good. And we picked Dabney. Well, anyway, he was going to do this. But at the same time, I was offered this offered this role on soap. I was to play the 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 blue collar wife, the uh, Richard uh, Mulligan. Mulligan's wife, and I wanted to play Kathy Hellman's part, the ditzy goofball mother of the other family. But she was already she was already cast, and. They wanted to cast this other mother, and I knew it. It, be, it would have been like doing uh, Rose instead of Blanche. I just wasn't comfortable with that, so I turned it down in favor of doing Apple Pie, which was the Norman Lear series. We made seven; they ran two, <laughs> and closed it. So I've got seven at home if you ever want to see them. Sure, <laughs> it's really cute. But that was. I turned down Jay Sandwich as a director in Soap in order to do Apple Pie. Soap lasted a little longer, I guess. You know, Soap didn't run very, I think they only, didn't they just do a year and a half? It's like three years at least. Really? They have three seasons on, on DVD. Is that right? Yeah. Well, then I've been misinformed. Ah, well, I'm here for you. I was going to play Billy Crystal's mother. Right. That would have been, but... I loved Ginger Nell Hollyhock, mm. and I loved Norman Lear, and I loved the idea of doing this wonderful little play. But you see, the way things conspired against me there, the way things transpired, perhaps I should say, um, Norman put the pilot together. We ran the pilot, I mean, we did the pilot, 
And then he went to China. He left television and went to China. Well, there goes our leading light. Then, the man who was running ABC, it was an ABC series, um, Fred Silverman, whose show this was, left ABC and went to NBC. So there goes the guy who's behind us at ABC. Marcy Carsey came in that year with Vegas and Mork and Mindy and, oh man, I mean, some blockbusters. And uh, our little show just got absolutely swept under the rug. We should have, uh, we had a first time producer and a first time director. And we should have, if only Norman had been there, I think he would have gone to Silverman at NBC and asked him to bring the show with him. See if he can't put it on over there. Uh, because that was the only way to do it. But we were just left high and dry. But you know, I've been very, very lucky, very lucky in getting both Maud and Golden Girls and in between Mama's family. And don't you know they killed me on Mama's family the year before they killed Aunt Fran, the year before Golden Girls came along. If they hadn't, I would have continued to play Aunt Fran and I would have missed out on Blanche. So I've been very lucky. I don't have anything to complain about. Um, I interviewed uh, Vicki Lawrence last week. I thought that role that she did, the way she played Mama just tickles me Pink. I think she's very funny in that part. I didn't like my part. You didn't? No. When they offered me the role of, it was Aunt Fran's sister, and she was supposed to be a fiery bombshell that was just as tough as, as Mama. And so they would go head to head. Well, I accepted the role of Aunt Fran. Then while my back was turned, they discovered Dorothy Lyman on All My Children. And they think that she'd make a wonderful daughter-in-law to marry Ken Berry, and that she will now be the one to lock horns with Mama. And so they make Aunt Fran into this prissy little uh, Peter Pan collar, uh, repressed, you know, little thing. It didn't really tickle my funny bone that much. Okay. Blanche was a little bit meatier. Blanche had dimension that I could explore, dimensions. Yeah. And besides, I love playing flamboyant parts. I, I, I so much prefer outlandish people. What was nice about the... Uh about the Golden Girls particular sandbox is that all four of you had dimension and nuance and pasts that could be explored yeah. infinitely. Um, what kind of audiences reactions did you get to Blanche? All positive, except my father. That's it for now. Next time, Rue McClanahan reveals why her real-life dad did not like Blanche, how Blanche's style led to Rue starting a clothing line and her hectic QVC career. Plus, whatever happened to Blanche's wardrobe? I also ask Rue, how would Blanche and Vivian have gotten along? What would Blanche be doing today? And Rose and Sophia. Don't miss it. Till then, are there any great scenes you loved in Golden Girls or Maud? Let us know in the comments. See you next time. Thanks for watching.